Hello my loves, Tony here from TL Yarn Crafts and welcome to an all new Yarn Snob Reviews. Fall is finally here and you know what that means, crochet all day. Now I picked up a few skeins of new yarns from my friends at Hobie and I'm excited to see what they have in store for us. For each of these yarns, I'm giving it my initial reaction, sharing my likes and dislikes and rounding out the review with my rating of one to 10 hooks. But before we start the review, let's check in with our video sponsor, HelloFresh. So what is HelloFresh, you say? Get mouth-watering seasonal recipes and fresh pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door with HelloFresh. As a work from home solopreneur, I'm embarrassed to say how often I skip lunch. Honestly, it's like three to four times a week at this point. Enter HelloFresh to the rescue, honey. They have quick meal options and so many five-star recipes, you can expect delicious meals in every kit. Now, if I'm gonna take a break for lunch, it better be worth it. And thankfully, HelloFresh cuts out all of that pesky planning and prepping so I can have lunch on my plate in about 30 minutes and you can feel good about eating this meal. HelloFresh's carbon footprint is 25% lower than that of meals made with store-bought groceries. Now as a first timer I am really digging HelloFresh because it encourages me to actually eat lunch like I know I'm supposed to in a way that works with my ridiculous schedule and the food is pretty darn good too. Now go to HelloFresh.com and use my code TLYARN14 to get 14 free meals, including free shipping. And if they have that crispy Frank's Red Hot Spice Chicken, get it now and thank me later. Our first yarn today is Highland Wool. With temps dropping, having some wool in a sweater, a scarf, or a beanie adds a layer of cozy. Highland is a category three DK weight yarn made from 100% Peruvian wool. A 50 gram skein costs $5.50 for 191 yards, which is about on par with similar yarns from other companies. You get to choose from just over 30 heathered hazy colors that give me major log cabin vibes. The first thing I notice about this yarn in the skein is the texture. It's smooth to the touch, but still has some bite to it. The wool in this yarn comes from the Peruvian Highlands, a region very popular for its high quality fiber. Highland is a mix of Merino, known for its opulence and soft hand, as well as Corydale, which is a beautiful fiber with a classic woolly texture. The combination of these fibers produces a yarn with unique dyeing properties, which is where this heathered look comes from, as well as a strong yarn that stands the test of time if you take good care of it. While I've seen yarns like this before, this is my first time trying them and I was pleasantly surprised. In the skein, this yarn looks far too small to be a DK weight, but it blooms almost instantly as it slips over your finger. The stitches it makes are uniform, neat, and oh so adorable. I was pleasantly surprised at how nice this yarn was to work with. It works up much softer than it feels in the skein and I didn't encounter any knots or kinks to slow down the process. I'm really grasping at straws to find something I didn't like about this yarn. I guess I could say it was a little slipperier than I thought it would be. In the skein, you can feel the texture of the yarn, so I thought it was gonna be a bit more grippy, you know, like a cotton, but it's honestly much smoother and it slips a little bit. I might go with a wood hook for a better grip if I use this yarn again. Overall, I give Highland seven out of 10 hooks. It's a really nice yarn if you're into that organic wooly feel. It's not my personal everyday style, but I see how using a yarn like this will lend a refined air to the right project. Highland wool would be a fantastic choice with my Adore shawl. The muted color palette would easily bring this project to life. Next up, I wanted to try Davina. Now I am a sucker for chainette yarn and Davina looked too good to pass up. Davina is a category four worsted weight alpaca wool blend with a touch of polyamide, which is a synthetic fiber in the same family as nylon. At the time of filming, Davina cost $12.49 per skein, but this is on sale right now for $6.90, which is a steal. The yarn itself is made from a polyamide mesh tube with the alpaca and merino wool blown into the tube. The finished yarn is light and airy, but still holds its cozy heat. My initial reaction to Davina is yes, yes, a thousand times yes. When I was picking the colors for this video, I had such a hard time because every single one of the 32 shades is just so Good. You really can't go wrong with alpaca anyway, but Hobie took it to another level by having a collection of solid shades, slightly tonal ones, and even a few with multicolors in there. Now, once you start crocheting with Davina, you can't help but fall in love with it. It is so soft, it's like crocheting with air. But there's still enough grip to the yarn, so I can crochet quickly and efficiently. I didn't have any issues with loose fiber floating around either, which is something I was worried about. When stitched, the yarn maintains its shape and its volume, lending itself to lightly 
pattern stitches. And the best part about it, chain net means that there is no splitting. My wood hook made quick work of this yarn with no intermittent stopping. The only downside to this yarn is the gamble that you take with how it's going to hold up over time. Alpaca is a very delicate fiber. It has a tendency to lose its stitch memory after blocking or extended wear, but I'd guess that the wool and the polyamide are going to make up for that. Over time, you'll have to stay on top of caring for anything made from Davina. Pilling is likely to be an issue, so keep your fabric shaver handy. I'd recommend working this yarn in closed stitches to prevent snags as well. I will happily give Davina 8 out of 10 hooks. She's a bit high maintenance but totally worth the effort and at this amazing sale price it's the perfect time to stock up for those luxurious accessories and wearables. If you really want to treat yourself make my mellow tunic with three of your favorite shades of Davina. Wrap yourself in buttery softness and stay warm all winter long. Let's dive even deeper into the world of fancy fibers with alpaca silk. As the name implies, this yarn is a blend of 70% alpaca and 30% silk. Each 50 gram ball normally costs $12.50, but is currently on sale for $9.30. Based on the website and the yardage, this yarn comes in a category to sport weight, though the label does says that it's a fingering weight. I'd recommend doing a swatch just to make sure. In the skein, alpaca silk is a stunner. It's even softer than it sounds with a slick, buttery quality. There's this ethereal halo around on the skein, giving it the lightness you expect from alpaca. Now the silk lends a faint shimmer to the yarn, allowing it to almost glow. Don't be surprised if you find yourself petting it for a while before you break out your hooks. Unfortunately, petting alpaca silk is about as far as the compliments go from me. Even when I doubled it up, I did not enjoy crocheting with this yarn. While I do love an opulent yarn moment, the slipperiness that you can often find with either of these fibers is compounded in this yarn. Even with my beloved prim hooks, I had a lot of trouble wrangling this yarn, which really bit into my speed and I just can't have that. Outside of the slipperiness, I was generally uninspired working with this yarn. There's nothing really wrong with it, but there's also nothing that gets my crochet heart thumping. You know, maybe the same yarn and a heavier weight would have done something for me or maybe even a different stitch. Even after I was done with the swatch, the love just was not there. I'm humble enough to admit when a yarn is better suited for knitting and I really think alpaca silk is just one of those yarns. It's a bit splitty, a bit slippery, and honestly a bit boring for my taste. For all those reasons, I'm out. No, I'm just kidding. For all those reasons, I'm giving Alpaca Silk 4 out of 10 hooks. Yes, it's lavish, but I think it's a bit too mature for me. I need some fun and I need some excitement in my yarns and this just was not cutting it. But if you are interested in trying Alpaca Silk, give it a go with my Skyward Kerchief. Hold a strand of mohair with it to add even more texture and warmth. Here we have umami, which literally means the essence of deliciousness. Let's see if it stands up to the name. Umami is a category six super bulky yarn that comes in 150 gram skeins with 91 yards in each. One skein is gonna cost you $11.49 normally, but you can find it on sale right now for $9.40 each. The yarn itself is made up of 78% premium acrylic and 22% wool. The two-ply twisted yarn has the loft and bounce that you've come to know from similar commercial yarns. At first squish, I can tell you this yarn is bringing both durability and warmth to the table. Accessories made from super bulky yarn are perfect for stocking your craft show table or gifting easy care accessories to friends and family around the holidays. The color selection is decent. You get to pick from 26 heathered shades with an especially good selection of grays and other neutrals. As I expected, I really liked crocheting with this yarn. One of my high priorities for projects is speed and umami does not disappoint. The stitches work up quickly and evenly, giving me great tension throughout my swatch. I did have a little issue with my first row of foundation stitches, but that's to be expected. After that first row, it was smooth sailing. One pro tip I will offer is to cake this yarn before using it. It makes it much easier to handle and prevents the yarn from getting knotted and jumping around. I don't really have anything bad to say about this yarn. It's very similar to other yarns already on the market with similar fibers and weights. For the yardage, I'd say it's maybe a little pricey. As with any heavy yarn, it's going to take multiple skeins to make anything significant and that can add up, but don't forget that Hobie offers bulk yarn discounts. If you need more than eight skeins, you can actually get Umami for $40 
40% off, so I won't ding this yarn for the price. I'm gonna give Umami 7 out of 10 hooks. It's a workhorse yarn. It's thick, it's quick to work with, and the touch of wool adds something special to those everyday makes. If you sell finished pieces online around the winter time or at craft shows, consider trying out Umami. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. The first project that comes to mind for this yarn is my queen cowl. Craft show audiences adored this piece back when I used to vend and I still get asked to make a few around Christmas time every year. Last but not least, we have Winter Glow and Winter Glow Solid. These are the two yarns I was itching to get my hands on and I'm so glad I did. Now Winter Glow has been in the Hobie lineup for a while now, but its companion Winter Glow Solid just joined the team. The original Winter Glow is a category four worsted weight yarn that is 51% wool and 49% acrylic. Each colorway is so unique, blending and layering so many beautiful colors together. Now the strands themselves have a loose ply and a slight thick thin texture adding some depth to your stitches. One 200 gram cake has 766 yards and costs $25.49 normally but is on sale right now for just $17.20. The solid version of this yarn is the exact same just in solid colors that perfectly complement the variegated skeins. These are 100 grams with 382 yards and you can get one for $11.99 but I'd recommend shopping the current sale to get over 20% off. If you know your way around a yarn store, you might know what yarn Winter Glow favors. I really wanted to try this one because Hobie is offering the look of that same yarn in an approachable way. The acrylic wool blend is easy care and the massive skeins mean you can easily get a whole project out of just one ball. The introduction of solid skeins adds dimension to your potential projects and yarns like this really stoke my creative fire. Since I had two colors to work with, I wanted to try this yarn in a granny square. Stitching with it was really fun, especially seeing how smoothly the yarn transitions from one color to another. On the scale from Brillo Pad to Baby Alpaca, I'd put this right near the middle, maybe leaning just slightly to the softer side. Since it is a wool and acrylic, my guess is it's going to continue to soften with use. I did find two unfortunate features of this yarn. The first is that it's a little tricky to find that center pull. For a skein this size, I'd really love to see a sticker marking the center pull or some other indicator. My biggest fear is feeling around in the middle of this skein for the end and coming back with a pile of yarn barf. I really wish we could just get center pull indicators to be a standard in the yarn world. Okay, I'm going to step off my soapbox now. The only other issue I found with this yarn is that it really likes to stick to itself. At times, I feel like I was pulling the strands apart to crochet with them. That's an easy fix though. I'd crochet with them from the outside of the skein or place the ball of yarn on the floor away from you to give it enough room to pull from the skein. I'm a big fan of how Winter Glow worked up, so I'm giving it 8 out of 10 hooks. I feel like I could really have fun designing something from outerwear to home decor with a durable, versatile yarn like this. If you want to give it a try and you're obsessed with the granny stitch like I am, check out my Daphne Afghan. It's available for free on my blog and works perfectly with a worsted weight yarn just like this one. So which of these yarns are your favorite? Let me know down in the comments and you can pick up these and plenty other fabulous yarns from Hobie.com. Please take a moment to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more crochet tips, tutorials, and product reviews. And don't forget my tip jar. Your contribution goes a long way in making fun videos just like this. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time.